My experience with fluoride actually goes back many years because uh, the World Health Organization asked me to help them develop what they called an environmental health criteria document on fluoride. So I drafted uh, that document that reviewed uh, the sources of fluoride in the environment, including drinking water, uh, the animal data, and the epidemiology. Uh, and um, WHO then called a working group to develop the final version of that based on my draft. And what happened was that um, the working group uh, had, I think it was a majority of uh, people with uh, dental um, research backgrounds. And um, they inserted changes in my draft indicating that fluoride could perhaps be toxic, but only at immense uh, concentrations. And um, when I um, protested and said that, that in, the, in accordance with the scientific documentation, it would be wrong to insert the word immense. And so um, uh, the working group uh, asked me to kindly go to the library and, and bring the documentation back. And so I, I said under the circumstances, I could not take responsibility for being part of the authorship. So I would rather leave the WHO meeting, which I did. It's the only time I've ever done that. But I was confronted with colleagues from the dental uh, science, uh, and, and they insisted on changes that I found scientifically inappropriate. And so uh, WHO published a document, and uh, without my name, be because I'd asked to have my name stricken, but, but then they inserted uh, some other colleague's name um, as the author of the draft, which, which is, of course, erroneous, but that was where WHO felt was necessary in order to protect the interests of water fluoridation.